So, uh, <clears throat> the introduction question says, do you have or have you had a getaway place? When do you go there? Anybody have a place you go to get away? The beach. Yeah, okay. The screened in porch. Sure, <laughs> yeah. A boat. <laughs> yeah, ah. yeah. The basement, so you know. <laughs> sure, sure, yeah. No, I, probably down in the home office yeah. for me. Get away. I'm like Diane, out on my porch. Yeah. Yeah. Or deck, I guess. Mm -hmm. deck. So, is there anything in particular that you think of when you think of that? When do you go there? Anything happening? Quiet. Yeah. 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 Peaceful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Relaxing nature, you know, the birds. Sure. Yeah. Trees. Yeah. Creativity. Sure. Yeah. yeah. I used it for social distancing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, wow. that's, you know, that's a common getaway reason is just to get away from everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what you're doing. Yeah. So, right. Yeah. My daughter gardens and the kids never bother her when she <laughs> might have to help. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she goes out the garden, they just know not to. They disappear. Yeah. 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 They don't, don't bother her for hours. Yeah. <laughs> they don't ask to help. Well, in our psalm, they advise David to get away. So we're going to. Uh, look at that. <clears throat> I'm going to read the psalm first. I mean, there's there's really um, three verses to this song. This psalm, um, verses one, two, three, is the you know kind of the temptation that's presented to David, and then verses four through six are his reaction, and then verse seven really talks about the result uh, in the end. Um, but you just got it in two sections because it's not very long. So. Uh, if you got uh, verses one through three, go ahead and start, and we'll read uh, through the psalm. <clears throat> In the Lord put I my trust. How say ye to my soul, flee as a bird to your mountain? For lo, the wicked bend their bow or bow; they make ready their arrow upon the string, that they may privily shoot at the upright in heart. If the foundations be destroyed. What can the righteous do? The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold. His eyelids test the sons of men. The Lord tests the righteous and the wicked. And the one who loves violence his soul hates. Upon the wicked he will rain snares. Fire and brimstone and burning wind will be the portion of their cup. For the Lord is righteous. He loves righteousness. The upright will be held, will behold his face. All right, thanks. Um, so what do we learn about this psalm from the title, the introduction? Um, that's before verse one there. To the choir master of David. What do we learn about this psalm from that title or introduction? written by David. Okay, so we know that, because not all the Psalms are written by David, there are other authors, um, but this one was written by David, so we can think about him, his life, his background as we read the Psalm, and so that's really helpful to know. And it was put to music too. Yes, and so again, this is part of the Old Testament hymnal. The Psalms. Um, it was sung and it was sung by people together. Um, yeah. The Psalms, and you know, this one kind of in particular, but a lot of them are so often viewed by us in our culture as very personal and private spiritual texts. You know, this is this is me. You know, this is for me to to take in and 
it, you know, understand and apply. It's, it's very often very personal and private. And, and that's true. That's, it's not like that's wrong to do. But the Psalms were written to be sung and read and used in a group of God's people together. That's what they're for. And so, you know, it's good you're here. <laughs> you know, because our culture is moving more and more towards, you know, people feel like, you know, I can read my Bible on my own. You know, that's important. I can do that on my own. I listen to Christian music. I sing praises to God. I can watch or listen to a church service. I can listen to or watch Bible study. <laughs> I don't need to <laughs> see anybody else. You know, I can just do this all on my own. And, you know, again, there are times and circumstances and, you know, people where that's what they have to do. But, you know, this is meant to be lived out with others. You know, Christianity is about the body of Christ. We need members of the body. Um, you know, the church is something that by definition is gathered together. Um, and so just it's helpful for us to remember that. And this is a reminder. Are all the songs sung? I mean, have they all been put to music? Well, Which we yes, know. they were all put to music in okay. the beginning. Yeah. You yeah. know, they would have all been sung they were to yeah. start well. Okay. Yes. And is it the same as a Psalter song? Yes. You know, the people yes. the Psalter, okay, which is yes. the hymn book. Is that, what does well, that mean? Does it mean song? Or? Yeah, the word psalm is it song. Does. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, from what it said there for the choir director, mm -hmm. were they were these songs sung by just a, a group of people within a group of people, or was it a whole congregation? It, it would depend on the occasion and the psalm okay. and all kinds of things, I think. But a lot of times things were done antiphonally, oh, you know, back and forth. Back and forth for you know the the group of singers and then the congregation you know there would have been all kinds of different ways they did it but it was together that it was done and different songs have different instruments in them too yes you know i mean they you know they probably there probably would have been a great variety in terms of how they would have been used and what it would have sounded like and you know all of that but you know, Psalms was their songbook. That's what it was. So you see Sella a lot. Is that a, like a chord change or what is that? <laughs> we don't know. And that's the problem with so many of these yeah. musical notations, mm -hmm. is honestly, we really <laughs> don't know for sure. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of speculation and ideas, <laughs> but you know. So much of this was, you know, the Hebrew language that they used was lost. It's not a spoken language. You know, the Hebrew of today that they speak in Israel isn't the same. I mean, it's Hebrew, mm -hmm. but it's, it's different. And so there was a time period where they didn't, you know, didn't use this language. And in that time period, you know, when they realized, oh, this is important, we probably should know this and study this, there was there were things that they lost. Mm -hmm. And some of those musical notations were part of what, and so they think they might know, you know, and the, uh, a lot of the speculation with Sela is that it was a pause or a change in what, was being done musically, but we don't know for sure. Yeah. yeah. So, but this now this is Old Testament. Yes. 
did they have a day that they all were together in the temple or to worship? A lot of people would have come to the temple on Saturdays if they could. But obviously, if you lived in yeah, Nazareth, yeah. you weren't coming to the temple every so Saturday. They just, they so just they, you know, we know for sure after the exile in Babylon, they developed synagogues that were in every town okay. and multiple Even synagogues. Even before Jesus. Yes. Yeah, before, yes. Yeah, just when yes. they were synagogues. Yeah. 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 Okay. And so what that would have looked like in David's time, mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, sure. I just have, I never. But there were priests that were scattered all around the country then, yeah. too. So. But they only had one temple. One temple, yes. 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 One temple, but. And the temple was in other places. the only place they could offer sacrifices. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Right. Yes. That was the big thing, was sacrifices. And, that, that and so it, it, that's why this is kind of odd to me because I didn't think of them as having worship services back then. I just thought yeah. of them going to the temple and offering their sacrifices. I didn't realize they. They would have Had gathered every Saturday okay. Okay. as a community mm -hmm. and worship. In Jerusalem, where the temple was? Was the temple in Jerusalem? The temple was in Jerusalem. Okay. But, you know, before the exile, I don't know exactly what, like you say, there were priests scattered around. And mm -hmm. I'm, a, you know, so we assume that they would gather in their town okay. with a priest and they would okay. worship together. But yeah. So, question two: What advice is David receiving here in verses one through three? What do they tell him to do? Flee, flee, run away, get away. Um, and so, can you think of situations that might have been occasions for him to get? that kind of advice. Can you think of any situations from David's life where people would have told him, you got to get out of here. You got to flee. Okay. And so that's the one that we think of is when Saul was hunting him down, basically. Is there any others that you think of? The lives. You know, he faced foreign enemies at times. And so there, you know, there could have been times there where, you know, he was threatened. And I mean, you know, when Goliath, the Goliath situation, his brothers told him to go back home. Yes, right? they did. But that wasn't because they were afraid for his sake. <laughs> <laughs> they just wanted to get him out of there. But well, but there would have been occasions where he was facing an enemy. Well, and didn't didn't Saul actually tell kind him? Of, yeah. To, yeah. You're a little you're, kid. You're a little kid. You should you should, go. Yeah. I don't think with Bathsheba, if he would have fleed. Yeah, yeah. If somebody yeah. should have told him to flee yeah. there. Get out of there. Yeah. You know, the temptation is yeah. great. So. Yeah. The other occasion that gets brought up that might connect with this is when David actually fled when his son Absalom usurped the throne oh. and was coming to kill him. That's something. Yeah. Son. Yeah, but you know that was he his did. son Wait. with Bathsheba, wasn't it? Absalom. Oh, didn't he die? Or mm -hmm. oh, she had another one. I suppose. Yeah, I, I'm not sure. Because oh. Solomon was his son with Bathsheba. Oh, what? Yes, first one that lived. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah, so I don't. I don't. Maybe think not. So. I don't. Maybe think so. not. Which yeah, would make more sense. Yeah. Really. Who's gonna say? <clears throat> yeah. 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 <laughs> right. <laughs> Who's going to ask Siri? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you don't need to know or wonder. You know, the, the challenge is those kinds of occasions would have brought about this kind of advice. But, you know, in the case of, you know, when Saul was after him and in the case when Absalom was after him, he did flee. Whereas in this case, he didn't. And so we don't know what the occasion was where something was going on and his advisors, his friends, some people were telling him, David, you've got to run away. You've got to flee. 
Um, so just to recognize that we don't know for sure what the background would have been. So the question though is, in question three, what attitude does such advice reflect? What were the people thinking when they were telling David he needed to flee? Safety. Yes. So the implication is his his life was in danger. But is there anything more going on here? Because on those other two occasions, when he did flee, his life was in danger. And you know, he did. Whereas in this occasion, they told him to flee. They said his life was in danger, but he didn't flee. So what is it in this advice that's being given that is different? What else is going on besides the fact that his life is in danger? Well, didn't they kind of walk him out of sight so he'd be out of mind because there was the other group that wanted to keep them stronger? So you, so you wonder about, was there some intrigue going on? You know, that, that could be a possibility. And that kind of thing did go on. It, it kind of sounds like the idea to flee was coming from people and not God. Okay. Yeah. 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 And so David rejects this advice. He doesn't understand it as being what God is telling him to do in this situation. And, and it seems like a big part of it is the advice to flee basically is God can't protect you. God can't take care of you in this situation. So you better flee. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the idea of David, David feels like if he flees, he will be abandoning the position that God has put him in. And basically running away because he's too scared and doesn't trust God in this situation. And so it's a little different situation um, that, that David is dealing with. Um, just a couple of other um, things to think about as you look at this. A look at Matthew 16, verse 22. <clears throat> Just a couple of other examples of when this kind of advice seems to be have been given. In Matthew 16, verse 22, uh, Jesus tells the disciples that he is going to go to Jerusalem and be crucified. And Peter, in verse 22, took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Far be it from you, Lord, this shall never happen to you. And so Peter is saying, you know, you can't let that happen. You can't be crucified in Jerusalem. Don't, don't follow that plan. Don't follow that route. And then Acts chapter 21, verse 12, which is another interesting situation. <clears throat> Acts chapter 21, Paul is on his way to Jerusalem. And he stops at places along the way and meets with the Christians who are there. And Acts 21 verse 12, when we heard this, we and the people there urged him not to go up to Jerusalem. And Paul said, I know when I go, it's going to be trouble. You know, I'm going to get arrested. It's, you know, it's going to happen. And so they say, don't go, Paul. You know, flee. Don't, don't let that happen to you. And Paul doesn't pay any attention to it. Um, he still goes and he gets arrested. <laughs> but you know, he knew that's what God wanted him to do. You know, the advisors were well-meaning, well-intentioned. They were friends. But 
that wasn't what the advice should have been. So just to recognize the challenge here with this psalm is how do we know when yeah. we should flee and when we should stand? You know, are there any things that you think of that can help us to know how do we weigh situations and, and make that decision? Your life is in danger. <clears throat> you know, I think you're going to be killed. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But I just look at the president of Ukraine. Yeah. So dangerous. He abused his kids. Yes. So yeah. And we would say he that. did the right thing. Yeah. Right. You know, it so, would have yeah. been worse if he'd have left. Yeah. But he what his life is in danger. Yeah. And so how do you know when yeah. you need to stay and when you need to flee? Is there anything that we can point to that can help us with that? Boy, a, a person would have to do a lot of praying and yes. asking for wisdom. Yes. Yes. That'd be the first thing. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And, and, you know, like, I think Paul's example is, is a helpful one in that, you know, he, in that context in Acts, the Holy Spirit said, if Paul goes to Jerusalem, he's going to be arrested. You know, so, it, you know, that was understood by the crowd <laughs> Well, then you shouldn't go, Paul. The Holy Spirit is giving you the direction not to go because the Holy Spirit is saying, if you go, you're going to be arrested. Paul says, no, nope, that's not what the Holy Spirit is saying. I know I'm going to be arrested, but I'm still supposed to go. Mm -hmm. Well, he was really in tune. Yes. Yes. But, but, you know, in that situation, he had a definite understanding that this is what God wants me to do. And so it doesn't matter what's going to happen to me. I know this is what I'm supposed to do. And so, you know, to pray, to seek God, to ask for his direction, you know, is foundational here to, to know what we're supposed to do. And I, I think, you know, if God has given you a job to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you really feel that that's mm -hmm. where God wants you, yeah. you know, I guess you just have to evaluate, am I running mm -hmm. for me or am I, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, it, thank yeah. goodness I haven't had to be in that. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. You know, and to me, that you know, that's such a huge part of it is it, it comes down to, you know, what is in my heart yeah. in mind. making this decision. Mm -hmm. And, you know, David in looking at this was seeing, you know, the people that are telling me to go are telling me to go because they don't really trust God with this. You know, they're scared and they're despairing and they're hopeless you know, that's what's in their heart. And so their advice to me, you know, I don't think it's right because that's where it's coming from. I think that making those decisions at the spur of the moment sometimes cannot, maybe not be right. Well, you know, we maybe need yeah. to think about them for a little yeah. bit where they were just yeah, reacting. Reacting. Yes. Yeah. 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 That book on women at risk that we have in our library, the women in the Middle East, you mm -hmm. know, the one mm -hmm. gal said, you know, danger is temporary, eternal life is forever. Yeah. So they risk everything yeah. to spread mm -hmm. the gospel. And yeah. I that's that's the way to look at it. Yeah. You know, yeah. Like you know, and, and there are Christians all around the world mm -hmm. that are making these kinds yeah. of decisions. Yeah. You yeah. know, and Amazing. weighing, you know, mm -hmm. if if I'm in China, mm -hmm. do I go to that church? Because if I go, I know there's cameras that are watching me along the way. And I know it's very possible that one of the other people there is actually a spy. You know? Yeah. And so do I go or not? You know, and it's very difficult decisions that they're making. 
Yeah. And if you just had your self to worry about, but you have your right. children yeah. and your spouse, yeah. and that's a hard part. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just tough. You know, I mean, thinking about your position too can be helpful. You know, like David in fleeing from Saul. He knew God had just anointed him. Right. So he didn't want Saul to kill him. Right. You know, you know, he is like, okay, God doesn't want me dead because <laughs> I haven't been king yet. Mm -hmm. So I guess I better flee. You know, so that you know there was something there when he fled from Absalom. I think there was a, a little bit of the all of these people who are depending on me are going to get killed. If I stay and face off with Absalom. Mm -hmm. And so I, I'm fleeing mm -hmm. to protect them. Mm -hmm. And I am trusting <clears throat> that, you know, if God says my kingship is done, okay. Mm -hmm. And if God wants me still to be king, he'll figure out a way to bring me back. You know, and so he went trusting God. And, you know, that's. That's something too we can be thankful for is if we make a mistake, yeah, second chance. God is, God is able, yeah. yeah, yeah, and God can still work, yeah, yeah. So let's look at the other big thing in this uh, passage, and that's with question four, looking at verse three, especially what are the foundations that are in view in verse three? And in what ways does our world seem comparable to the situation described in verses one through three? If the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? What are, what are the foundations that they're talking about there? Well, if it, if it was New Testament, we'd be saying, Foundation is Christ, mm -hmm. but since this is the Old Testament, <laughs> would be faith. Maybe. Okay. Or yeah. are they talking about a little or a literal foundation here? Uh, would they be talking about like the the gates of the city, or it could get to that point? But I don't think okay that would have literally been going on at the time. Okay. I think the foundations are a metaphor. Of the moral structure of okay. the church. Yeah, for sure. The moral <laughs> foundations of society, of culture. You know, the foundations are being destroyed. Are there other foundations that might like apply? Like sense of the world order. Okay, yeah. I mean, you know, our lives, our culture, our society has certain structures that are in place that make things work. And you know, these, those foundations are being destroyed. Just law and order, you know, um, civil society. That makes sense. You know, that's part of what was being said here. The foundations are being destroyed. What can the righteous do? Mm -hmm. you know? So. Yeah, my footnote says the foundations, I refer to it as the of a godly society. Oh, okay. That's pretty much what we were yeah. saying. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this is kind of wide open now. In what ways does our world seem to be in a comparable situation? It's just so funny. I, the, one of the stories I heard on the news today was that Starbucks was closing a bunch of its um coffee places because they were afraid for their employees safety because it it there was so much crime and stuff going oh. on which communities. yeah which was really interesting because those were the very communities and starbucks was very supportive of the, the what do you protests mean? well no but violence. the yes yeah, defunding, defunding the police yeah, yeah all of that yeah, yeah. And, I mean, and food, yet, the food of their, yeah, uh, to them, it, yeah. they don't they see don't that at all. So. But yeah, that's one of the ways we, we look around our country and say, are the foundations being destroyed mm -hmm. when we see violence 
in a lot of places. So the it's changes just in the rampant. schools. Yeah. They're trying to teach them. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, for sure. That's how I got here. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. 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 And a lot of the young men that are doing the shootings don't have any support of family. Yeah. Families, you know, they don't yeah. have that mentor in their family yeah. or yeah. someone that really cares about them. Yeah. yeah. And there were there were two other stories that were kind of they weren't right side by side, but I happened to hear both of them. And mm -hmm. one is about a um uh, this Mexican older man, I think he's in his 80s, who defended himself yeah. yes. and shot this robber or whatever, and he's being no. held. Yeah, yeah he's yeah. yeah. And at the same time, there is a well, fund me. Well, it's some guy, I don't even remember this story, but it happened a while ago that he was accused. I don't think he even. I'm not sure he actually went to trial um, for having molested a 13 year old. And he, he would, he plead to what? plead, there we go. I knew he plead, <laughs> plead to another country where well, he's Roman been. Polanski. Maybe that's what it oh, is. And now the, there's a judge that wants to let him to come back and he won't have to serve any time. Oh, All in the same state. Yeah. And it just was like, yeah, crazy. Yeah. yeah. How can this be? It's yeah, things down. seem like it's yeah. all crazy. Yeah. It's the foundation of our down. country, you know, we're <coughs> supposed to have a border. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 That foundation is mm -hmm. pretty shaky right now. Yeah. 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 I was just reading an article about in, you know, in California, the governor is trying to get a law passed so that the state can demand or require people with severe mental illness have to be medicated. You know, Without their consent? Well, they try to get their consent, oh. but if they're, you know, if they're diagnosed, it's clear they have a severe mental illness. Mm -hmm. And they are a problem to society, you know. We've got to be able to give them medication. And you how know? do they propose to do that? Well, there's all kinds of stuff with that. Yeah. But the, the, the thing that was interesting to me was, you know, this article dealt with ministries that deal with the homeless population there. And they said, what has happened is. <clears throat> Fentanyl is so prevalent mm -hmm. among that population, and mm -hmm. it does serious brain damage. Oh. And so these people who are, you know, crazy, mm -hmm. you know, but mm -hmm. what can be done mm -hmm. in those situations? I mean, just there's like nothing mm -hmm. <laughs> to stop it, nothing to help. It just is all such a mess. Yeah, and that gets the fentanyl gets back to the southern border. Yeah, and there's yeah, yeah, enough that's fentanyl the yeah. come across the border to kill every American. Mm -hmm. not, not to mention the human trafficking. And yeah. 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 It's just uh, yeah. It's a disaster. Yeah. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Well, and I think that that's why that question is so important. What can the righteous do? Uh, it's yes. come to the place yeah. where in our culture now it's so bad, mm -hmm. like Sodom and Gomorrah, yeah. that as a Christian, I don't feel like I can do anything mm -hmm. to fix any of the problems. Yeah. Like we it, talked about except that, right? to deal with individuals who right. yes. might want to yes. hear yes. what I have to say about yeah. what they think. Yeah. And, you know, I, I, it's hard for me because I, I really, I know from revelations that the time is going to get worse and instead <laughs> of better. And so, but there's a part of me that always in, in the last 20 years have thought that the Christians, including myself, have failed yeah. in yeah. reaching people yeah. with yeah. the gospel. Yes. Yeah. And we're, there's, yeah. we're, we're actually kind of a, 
country without an evangelist anymore. When Billy Graham sure. died, we lost the best of the best. Mm -hmm. And it, our country no longer has any evangelistic um, voices, voices, voices that are yeah. strong. Yeah. 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 There are probably some individuals out there with that gift, yeah. but we don't yeah. see them mm -hmm. the way we right. saw him. And, yeah. and then as a result of that, people don't come to a saving yeah. faith. Yeah. And I just feel like if you don't have a saving faith, you don't have a solid foundation yeah. for culture, mm -hmm. yeah. for a moral culture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we have gone so far. I, I still, Jim, I'll never forget the sermon where you said, if we make one step over oh. and cross the line, it doesn't seem so bad because we're just going slightly over the line. But when you keep following that path, the line gets bigger and bigger. And we're yeah. at that place as our culture. It feels like it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. One good news, though, is we get the abortion I situation. Know. I mean, that's a... You know, that's a, yeah, that's uh, a big, amazing baby. thing. Yeah. yeah. Thousands of babies. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. 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 Time. So, <laughs> well, go ahead. I was just going to say, I saw that in California, they're trying to pass something that will allow, um, because it'll be up to the states yeah. that allow abortion. I don't even know how you can call it abortion anymore. After. Oh, up to a month. Yeah, yeah, a month after birth. I mean, it all is after birth. Some of the laws include the term perinatal. You know, that abortions are legal perinatal, which medically, you know, the correct use of that term, it can apply to a baby. Yeah. Up to a month oh, after birth. Isn't that awful? I mean, it's bad. That and, it's... and part of it is the laws are, you know, some of those laws are nobody can um, bring a case when there's an accusation of a death of a baby up to a month after birth. Is that actually happening now? No, it's laws it's that are being proposed at this point. But there are also. Well, I don't know. It's still going to be happening somewhere, but but you know, it's not. Yeah, these are laws that are being proposed in response. Yeah, but as a nation, taking role versus yes, aid, yeah, uh, yeah, is a yes, that was a, is, is yeah. a major. Yeah. But I really feel like now is the church's opportunity. Yeah. To move in and help those to, young yes, moms those yes, moms. to I really, know. you know, I'm mm -hmm. just so thankful for our. Um, resources. Well, and and for the um, OMA, OMA I know. you know, and maybe maybe mm -hmm. we're going to be seeing that used a lot yeah. more. Maybe mm -hmm. there will be more mm -hmm. babies available to be yeah. adopted. Mm -hmm. Well, in ten years, I think we've done twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight. I don't know, uh, somewhere in there. Yeah, yeah. helped with the adoptions of that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you've given um, like gift cards to the oh, crisis yeah. crisis. every every November. Yeah, and so and they go to they go to women who are planning to keep their babies, and mm -hmm. then that fifty dollar gift card is spent with for diapers, formula. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And see, that's they need. that's the criticism I hear so, or I read so much on Facebook. Mm -hmm. oh, shit. Should be that, <laughs> but it's always oh, you Christians, you are you know, say you can't have abortion then you do nothing to help the but, I think but we but, do yeah, but well we do we do here yes and, and i'm so thankful yeah, but i they're but, trying to tear down these but i do that help yeah. but i do think that there are communities where and churches and cultures where nothing is done yeah yeah no. so question five <laughs> And how, how does verse four answer the question, what can the righteous do? Yeah. How if does I understood apply? your sermon right, I'm not sure I understood your sermon, but I think if I, how understood, that be? <laughs> if I understood your sermon right, there isn't anything we can do. Okay. Did I understand that right? Oh. So how does verse four oh. answer the question? The, the, the verse four is that we have to trust God. And, and there I might think not be anything we, we can do. And, and you know, Marcia said she's never been in that situation where she has to make a choice, but I would tell her that she has. But 
just because every day we make choices. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. And both of us have been in public education. And so what we choose to do in the public education yeah. classroom or how we choose to interact with students or teachers, yeah. or teachers yeah. impacts our testimony to them. And it has to do with trusting God to give us those moments when we have those moments. We don't flee them. Right. Now, I'm also cautious. You know, no. I don't want to get fired. No. No. <laughs> but, no. but there have been times when I reached for my Bible across my desk and pulled it out and talked to students. And, and um, you know, yeah. No. Or if a student says to me, when I'm asking them about their time schedule for their homework and helping them set up their homework, and they say, well, on Wednesday night, I go to Bible study for Campus Crusade for, for crew. Oh. And, and I'll say, well, that's an important thing. We don't want to, we want you to do that. <laughs> so no, no. Yeah. so no, no. let's figure out around your schedule so that you can do that. Mm -hmm. um, where do you have places that are free to actually do your homework? Because that comes up when we when yeah. get our homework yeah. done. Yeah. 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 I got notes from the sermon about what can we do, and he said our righteousness comes from Christ. Keep on being righteous, loving, and faithful to God and His Word. Don't live in fear or despair. So, mm -hmm. you know, I the old saying: you can't change the world, but you can't change the world for one person. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, if you just like one you person. said, one person. Who's God got knocking at your door? Mm -hmm. yeah, exactly, mm -hmm. because you, you know, know. Mm -hmm. sometimes you help someone. <laughs> yeah, and. and uh, and then, and then somebody will say, well, if you help that person, then pretty soon they'll have this person to help. And I'll yeah. say, well, but then I have another person that may help. And they yeah. probably will help someone yeah. because you, you know. So, we, you well, know. that's true. It you know, yeah. 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 So, you know, like it, things grow and you don't understand how yeah. and why they grow. And sometimes yeah. they're little things, yeah. you know, yeah. like we send 36 folks to yeah. Alaska and yeah. then turn around and yeah. Yeah. next week. Becky's asking me if we can make 130 by October. <laughs> 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 so if we're really to help with it, you don't have to make all the yeah. 130. But, but, yeah. but it's like, okay, and this is an opportunity on the Native American Reservation yeah. in South oh, Dakota, yeah. which is oh, a, and it's sure. a whole same concept. The, the, they go there to teach BBS and to they, the children, and the children come, and the parents let the children come, yeah. but the parents don't come, and they're going to use the quotes to try to draw the parents to um, come. Yeah. 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 I, I think with the way our world is right now, we are going to end up having to find new ways to reach people. I don't think they're just going to come to church. Right. 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 Those churches right. are really springing up. Yeah. 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 You know, how, do, how does what is said in verse four, how should that help us when we are in this situation where, you know, the foundations are being destroyed. We wonder what can the righteous do? You know, the wicked bend the bow, they have fitted their arrow to the string, shoot at the upright in heart. I mean, you know, that's happening. You know, these are realities. There are, you know, problems. How how do the things that are in verse four, how should those things help us? In this situation, well, God is still in control, yeah, right? okay. he's yeah. still on the throne, God, is, God and, is on the throne, and we know yeah. the end of the story by, yeah. from Revelations that yeah. he's going to win in this mm -hmm. situation, yeah, um, when it seems hopeless, yeah. yeah. When you said David does it because he is focused on God, yeah, you know, keep your eyes yeah. on God, not the situation, yeah, and yeah, his and that, that was such an interesting thing in the psalm. You know, that the advice that's given, you know, at the end of starting at the end of verse one with the quotes mm -hmm. through verse three versus what David says in verses four through seven, you know, verses one through three, you know, the end of verse one through verse three, there's no mention of God. Mm -hmm. But when it gets to David talking, mm -hmm. it's the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, mm -hmm. you know, and it's so. You know, such a huge contrast. It's it's interesting. The Lord is in His holy temple. David wrote this psalm. Who built the temple? Yeah. And so that's so interesting that David says the Lord is in His holy temple. The temple isn't built yet. Oh, it hadn't been. Oh, okay. Really? Yeah. Oh. Solomon builds it after yeah. David dies. Well, he was oh, it's after, after yeah. David dies. Oh. Yeah. 
Sure. And so, so it tells us probably two things. One is the temple that David has in mind isn't this physical building. Right. It's right. yeah, that's heaven. what I picture. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. that's yeah. the throne. Okay. That's the temple oh, sure. that David yeah. has in mind. But the word temple before the temple was built could be used to describe the tabernacle. And so probably David also is using that word to say, yes, the Lord is in his holy temple in heaven. He's on the throne in heaven, but he is in his temple. He's not just up there somewhere, but he is also in our midst. And we are a temple. Yeah. yeah. I am. Um... I, I want to go back to Diane's statement about what she remembered from your sermon about that we're not to be afraid or not despair. I, I think what's really hard in our culture is not to do either one of those it two is. things. It is easy to it do is. both of those things. Yeah, I yes. should never listen to the news. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Corey Ted said this a couple times on page radio. She said, look, look at the world, you'll be distressed. Look inside, yeah. you'll be depressed. Look up. To Jesus, and you will be at rest. And I oh, thought that's, that's so amazing. true. Diane, you remember every oh, twice clever <laughs> thing you <here. laughs> And I write it down. I will look, still, I write all those little gems down. But and then you read them? Um, I do often, yeah, because yeah, when I'm writing another one down, I read the one I wrote before. So, what is that? Say it again. Um, look at the world, and you'll be distressed. Look inside, and you'll be depressed. Look up to Jesus and you'll be at rest. At rest. And it's so true. Keep your eyes on the Lord. And, yeah. So David looks to God. Mm -hmm. You know, that is what makes the difference. And, you know, we talk about the Lord is in his holy temple, the Lord's throne is in heaven. And then that next <laughs> statement in verse four his eyes see. Mm -hmm. You know, we so often feel like mm -hmm. God doesn't, God doesn't see, doesn't see this. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody sees. Yeah. 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 And, and this reminds us, God sees us. Mm -hmm. He knows what's going on, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, he's not blind yeah. to this. He's not unaware of it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the Lord tests the righteous. Mm -hmm. So part of this is, you know, God doesn't say this is going to be easy. Mm -hmm. You know, and God wants, you know, me to stand well, we can even Wrong. see when there were times in David's life when he despaired and was yeah. afraid. Yeah, mm -hmm. there I mean, were. He, even mm -hmm. though this psalm says he trusts in the yeah. Lord, he came to that yeah. through, mm -hmm. through yeah. that fear and despair yeah. because he was yeah. greatly despaired when he yeah. was going to when he realized he was going to be judged and lose Solomon or not yeah. lose the, yeah. the first baby when yeah. the first baby's yeah. Yeah. So yeah. there are times that even he yeah struggle yeah we were talking earlier about trusting the lord and i wondered at the time you know david he was going through all this stuff and he was a mess mm -hmm. and he really really embraced the lord mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. i'm wondering if that helped him get a clear picture of what he should do yeah yeah experience mm -hmm. yeah yeah, yeah. I mean, is the Lord letting him know in no uncertain terms this is what you should do? Mm -hmm. And uh, I wonder if we, myself anyway, I should speak for myself. Sometimes I get too cavalier. I don't know if that's the right word, but it's like everything's going well. <laughs> you know, and it's like maybe I would know more about what the Lord wanted me to do if I was in a little despair. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, there's, you know, crying out to God we do. happens when we're right. in trouble, right. you know. Right. So sometimes that's right. what it takes to, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, get us to do that. Um, look at question six. What is the Lord doing? According to verses five and six, in response to the attacks of the wicked, what are, what are the things that you see there that the Lord is doing? I wouldn't want to be in their shoes. Okay. You know that jumped out at me when Jim was preaching, although not because he brought an emphasis to it, but I had no idea that God hates. Hmm. That's very strong. His soul hates. Language. Yeah. 
And, yeah. and that just kind of threw me. I thought, yeah. really, has God hate? Mm -hmm. And he does. Yeah. Evil. He hates evil. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and you know, you recognize, you know, that's human language to try to describe God. Right. And we shouldn't understand it to be, you know, emotional or a reaction in God. It's a stand he takes in response to, and it's wickedness, violence. Right. You know, against that that's what he's dealing with, but it's this very strong language. And you know, and then verse six, you know, and, and the point is God will bring judgment. Mm -hmm. We might not see it, you know, but God will, God will make things right mm -hmm. in the end. And and we can trust him to do that. And then question seven, what hope? Does David focus on in verse seven? The Lord is righteous and loves justice. Upright men will see his face. So, what is that picture? Upright men will see his face. Yeah, they'll see God's face. Those that, yeah, trust him. Well, we always wish we could see him face to face mm -hmm. and ask him questions. And yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and and you know, it it is. You know, looking at heaven ultimately, you know, that is the promise that we can count on, even if the politicians are destroyed, you know, even if the end comes and it's not good in this world, there is still a world to come that we can count on. And, and that's something that's important for us to remember. So we're going to stop there. Just encourage you to think about and look at those last verses. Um, you know, which of those statements are the best encouragement to you to persevere in following Jesus? And we need to hold on to those those truths that are there. Let's pray as we close. Heavenly Father, we pray for your wisdom as we find ourselves in situations sometimes where we don't know what to do. And we wonder, uh, do we stand or do we flee? Uh, Lord, help us to seek you and to be able to understand your direction and your guidance. Lord, we do pray for our world and our society where we seem to see the foundations are destroyed. We can point to so many things that, that look that way. But God, help us not to despair. Help us not to be hopeless. Help us not to be afraid. But help us to really look to you and know that we can trust you, that you are with us, that you are on the throne. Lord, thank you for this example. And I pray that you'd help us to Look that out in our everyday life, even in little things that we face. Thank you for this time in Jesus' name. Amen. So next week, we're going to be looking at Psalm 37. So if you would like a little head start or want to take a look at the study guide ahead of time, that will be on the table over here. I was listening to Reed Kramer on the radio shoes for World Missions and she said.